Tonight, uh, really, really pleased going back and watching the film and you're seeing, uh, seeing just positive strides. Um, you know, we, we challenged our guys last week of, of the, with the way that they prepared, uh, you know, the, the, the mindset which they brought into the game. You know, we wanted to, to go out and, you know, play a complete game. You know, we have not, we had not done that, you know, uh, you know, throughout the, the early part of the season. And, you know, I thought the guys embraced the challenge. You know, we started off with, uh, uh, with a bang on the kickoff return, you know, really, really big for uh, for our special teams unit. Something we've been we've kind of hammering away at. Uh, you know, Trey did a great job of, uh, of of trusting, you know, trusting what he had in front of him. Broke a couple a couple tackles. You know, some some really key blocks that helped spring it. And uh, you know, I thought that was big. Also had an 18 yard punt return, which is something that we needed to to see. I thought Micah did a nice job uh, throughout the night fielding the balls that he could uh, he could field. But um, you know, really got off to a, to a great start in that game. Uh, you know, a dominant first half. Uh, you're going into halftime, 31 nothing was uh, was big. You know, I thought the defense really played fast. It was it was good. You know, seeing uh, with some, you know even with some guys that were out in the game. Uh, you know, just you know really seeing you know players step up. Uh, you know, I thought guys like you know Josh Farmer played you know uh, you know his best game. You know, Jarrett Jackson really you know really uh, you showed up. Uh, Patrick Pay Payton, you know Derek McClendon, you know. Uh, Dennis Briggs, you know, all, all those guys up front really did some some nice things. I thought our linebackers played fast. I thought, uh, you know, Jamie Robinson, you know, you know, really, really, you know, flashed when he's out there on the field. Uh, but you know, it was it was going back and watching tape. I thought he played, uh, you know, at a really high level. You know, that there throughout the course of the game, we knew the skill players that they had. Uh, you know, a quarterback that was experienced and, and talented. And uh, but I thought, uh, you know, all in all, our defense was uh, was really good throughout the course of the evening. Um, you know, offensively. Uh, you know, I thought. I mean, I'm just I'm I'm pleased with what we're doing. Um, you know, just the uh, the buy-in from from the entire group. You know, we were able to show good balance. Um, you know, Boston College did a good job of, of, of condensing some things in the run game there early. Uh, you know, Jordan Jordan was exceptional. Played uh, you know, played at a very high level. You know, once again another receiver uh, really you know jumped out there. Darion had a great first half. You know, uh, ended up you know kind of getting banged up, wasn't able to finish the game. But uh, um, you had almost 100 yards receiving there in the first half. You know, um, just everybody making the most of their opportunities and uh, you know able to able to spring some runs. Uh, you had some explosive runs that showed up throughout the course of the game. And uh, you know, just like I said, more than anything else, it was just the mindset that I was I was most pleased with, and you know, just the way the guys approached the week, and and how that was able to carry over on game day. And um, you know, we're excited about uh, the, the week that's ahead, and another opportunity to be here at home, another opportunity to uh, to, to to take a, uh, a another step with where we're trying to uh, trying to get to with within our program, and you know, the confidence of of seeing. The work that was invested last week in practice and how that applied out there, uh, you know, on on the field Saturday night, you know, we need to continue to to, to push there. And uh, you know, I thought last night was we had great meetings, we had, you know, a, a great practice in, in the in the short practice that we had. But uh, you know, I like where our guys, you know, you know where they are mentally. Um, but we got to continue to push in, in all other areas. But uh, we got a great great opponent that's coming in. They're they're coming off, uh, you know, just an incredible football game. You know, you know, they came up a little. Bit Bit short there at the end, but I mean, this is uh, you know you know a, a very talented uh, team that we're going to play, and you know they've got great experience. They've got uh, uh, guys that play extremely hard. They're very well coached. Um, you know, so excited for the opportunity that, that we have in front of us, and got to go uh, get better this week. All right, first question will be Ira to your right. A lot of times, uh, receivers have a perception in football of, of being. Divas or whatever, you know. The no, I was I was a receiver, just so you know. <laughs> uh, uh, but the team you coach, uh, it seems like these guys are a little bit different. I mean, they, they seem to embrace the physicality, the dirty work, things like that. Is that um, something learned, or is that something you guys identified when you brought some of these guys in? Well, I mean, you, you know, we want guys that are that truly aspire to be their best in all. And you know, playing playing receiver. Uh, you you never know how many opportunities you're going to get, but on every play you have a, you have an opportunity to make an impact, and that's 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 what I love and, and the way that our guys are are approaching uh, you know, you know, each game and you know, each rep is that you know, one of my favorite plays in the games was on Darion's tunnel. You I mean I know I mentioned he gets mentioned a lot, but watch Johnny Wilson blocking 50 yards down the field, pretty impressive. You know you see you I mean you see the the, the mentality of guys you know. 
I thought Micah had a, had a really good game and was able to, to make some big catches and, and tough runs. You know, I mentioned Darion earlier, you know, um, you know, Kentron, you know, with his first touchdown. I mean, it, you know, but there's, there's a lot of things that go beyond just with ball in hand, but that are impactful to the game. And our guys want to be successful. Yeah, they care about each other. They care about, you know, the, the success that our running backs have. They care about the success of the offense. They, they, you know, everybody wants the ball. That's, that's a given. But you know, when you're willing to, to make the investment and to, to do the dirty work, to, to allow the offense to, to be able to go, it does benefit them. Because you know, when you can run the football, when you can, when you can do those things, you're going to get you know, tighter, tighter uh, you know, play to the line of scrimmage, which creates more one-on-one -on -one matchups, which gives better opportunities to push the ball down the field. So um, you know, I'm glad that our guys, you know, they embrace that mindset. And uh, like I said, I mentioned last week, I think Coach Dugans is doing a great job with them. And, you know, they're showing up when they get the, their, their numbers called there in the passing game as well. Did, uh, did Boston College defend Johnny the way you thought they might after uh, the game against Louisville? Did you see any shift in coverage towards him that maybe you hadn't seen prior? They had, they had a little, I mean, they, should, they played a little bit, uh, little bit more cover too there early in, in, in certain things. Uh, but, you know, ultimately I don't know if that was necessarily just for, for Johnny or, you know, it was a, uh, just a big picture, big picture, uh, you know, approach of uh, variations of what they wanted to show. Um, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, everybody's going to try to take away something. And, um, you know, it was the, the, the way things worked out. I mean, you know, Cam was able to, to, to get a couple plays over the middle when the safety was playing a little bit wider. It, it's got to all play off of each other. And, um, you know, it was it's just kind of the way the, the, the flow of the game went. Um, so I, I don't know if it, it was specifically their plan, but, you know, it, it's where as a quarterback and all skill guys, you never know, you never know when that's, you know, when, on, on any given call or with each opportunity of, of how somebody's going to try to defend you, but you got to take what they're giving you. And I thought, you know, Jordan did a great job of that. And, uh, you know, it really helped kind of spark the offense. On Jordan, how impressed were you with how he pushed through last week to play? How did he feel on Sunday? And also, how good of a job is he doing keeping his eyes downfield and being a passer first? Uh, I mean, he did a, did a great job. And, you know, I, I touched on it just after the game. I mean, it was it was impressive seeing him get to Wednesday. And, you know, I mean, he was able to be very, very limited there on Tuesday. And then, you know, just – but he was getting so – you know, he got treatment so much from, from last weekend all the way up. And then – you know, when I saw him out there Wednesday moving around and just, you know, even though he was still, you know, not full go, but I felt very confident where, where that would where that would progress to. And um, to go in and play the way that he did, you know, it just speaks volumes to, to, to the preparation that he's uh, that he's putting in. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, he's going, he, you know, coming out of the game, he felt great, you know, was able to uh, practice yesterday. Um, you know, we continue to, to, to push him. I mean, I think you saw some of the, you get the adrenaline going and just some of those reactionary things. I mean, that, that one run that he had was, was remarkable. And, you know, he is, he's very confident in, in what he sees. You know, you know, he had the early play, you know, coming out of the end zone where he scrambled and was able to put the ball over uh, to Darion. And then, you know, later on, I think it might have been that same drive where he scrambled and, you know, things, everybody pushed back and stayed in coverage. And, and he was able to get a 15, 16 yard run uh, based off of it. So, um, you know, that's, that's the balance. You, you know, he has great athletic ability, but, you know, he is, uh, what he's able to do with his arm and trusting the rhythm, trusting the, the uh, you know, his guys that are out on the perimeter, it's, it's, um, it's pretty, uh, pretty special to see. Yeah, uh, you know, I think it, you know, each each experience allows you to build confidence, and uh, you know, we've all watched it in practice. You know, even though he's been you know limited in his availability, we t we've talked about that or you know, earlier in the season. Uh, but to see him do that in game day and really in, a, in, a, in one half, I mean, he was I think at five you know five catches for almost a hundred yards, and um, you know it was I think you know maybe played it was eight to ten plays that he was actually in, um, but. You know he's capitalizing on him, so those those opportunities are going to continue to grow because you see you you see the confidence that's building in him as a player. Um, you know coming out coming out of the weekend, you know we'll we'll continue to see how he progresses. Uh, you know throughout this week, I mean I, I'm hopeful that he'll be able to 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 be available. But you know even you know even if not, there's a lot of things that that you know, he should he should be very confident in by what he's been able to do. Um, 
you know, I think he's got a great future in front of him, and it's definitely exciting, exciting to see him making those plays. You know, um, you had a couple players love it and um, burst out for again on sa um, Saturday. How big is it for like you know someone like Patrick Payton and others to step up in a game like that? You know, where your defense probably played, it, like you said, it's the most complete game. I think it's huge, and I mean, uh, you know, we 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 pride ourselves in the development of the depth that we have and that competitive that competitiveness um, to be able to play multiple guys. And when you see guys really forced into bigger roles. Um, for them seizing those the, those opportunities, I mean, it's huge. And you know, like I said, you know, you know, Pat is, you know, he's he's got a, a world of talent. And uh, you know, as he's as he's getting out and getting more and more play, um, you know, he's been very impactful. Whether it's there in the Louisville game last week, um, you know, and what I love is that you know, even even coming out of the game, I mean, he's. He, he was pretty irritated that he missed out on finishing some sacks and some opportunities that he had. Now it's, all right, well, what, why did that happen? Now what are the things we need to do to, to get better as we're pushing this week? And so you really feel that hunger. And it's not just him, but it's, it's collectively as a team that I mean, if, you're getting, if you're getting opportunities, you're crossing that white line to go play and, and to make an impact, and let's go be our best. And that's where you saw a big jump from Josh Farmer, even in the reps that he had against you know, Louisville to what he did this past week. I mean, you, you saw him playing fast. Same thing, same thing with JJ. Guys that are very talented, but now pushed into playing larger roles. Uh, you know, we need that type of uh, continued growth, and they're working very hard. And they know that I mean, this team is counting on them and depending on them to play at a high level. You, you called it a, a complete game, especially mm -hmm. for the defense. What do you think that can do for their confidence going into them? I and you talked about the uh, the talented and experienced Wake Forest offense they're about to go up against. Well, I mean, you see preparation carrying over in, into the game, and you know some of the things that some of the issues that showed up in you know the earlier weeks were communication. You know, making sure guys trust in their fundamentals. You know, you you taking what they saw and being able to to, to apply that in in a in a very quick and decisive manner. This week, we're going to play, you know, Wake is going to play as fast as anybody that we play. I mean, they're, they're going to push the tempo. We're going to have to be on point with our communication. We're going to have to make sure that we're playing with great fundamentals and with relentless pursuit. And what they do is challenging. They're going to put a lot of guys in, in conflict, in responsibility, but, you know, you got to trust you got to trust each other to do your job. And, and when you get a chance to make a play, we got to go make the plays. And, um, you know, I think our defense is, is – uh, you know, they're building in their confidence throughout the, throughout the year, and you know we're seeing guys that are playing fast. I, I thought we, you know, I thought it was the fastest set we played, and we've seen those flash moments. I mean, but you know, getting a guy like Azari Thomas getting in and being able to to have some of those. I mean, you know, you watch him on the reverse, and you saw him close his closing speed. It's, those are good plays to have, and you see, you know, guys trusting their their uh, uh, their eyes and just the natural reactions that they're having. So uh, we're going to get to continue to build on that, and like I said, have a great week of prep. Hey, coach, I'll be the one to ask. Uh, with Hurricane Ian just kind of hanging out right now, how do you prepare this week? Is it business as normal until otherwise? And do you guys have kind of alternate plans? Do you have an idea of what will happen this yeah, week? Yeah, absolutely. You know. Uh, um, you know, Michael Alford has been in conversation, and the administration and the university has been in conversations. Um, you know, even with ACC last night of, of having alternate plans ready. It's something we we talked to the team about last night that we were going to make sure that you know nobody knows exactly you know what is going to occur as a week goes on. But uh, you know, our plan we are pre we are prepping for this game, and uh, you know we will have plans in place uh, if anything you know does occur that needs to to, to alter that. But right now that's uh, uh, that's all of our focus and. Uh, um, you know, making sure that you know, guys you know, understand that, that we will always have a, uh, a plan in place for them. And then, you know, obviously the, just the thoughts with everybody within the state just, um, you know, of the, of the potential of what's, what's coming. And, um, you know, just, you know, thoughts and prayers with, with all the, that's coming through towards the end of the week. Uh, that's you know the administration and conference and everybody that um, you know they're 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 controlling that. I don't have any any control with it, so um, you know I'm, I'm going to focus on just make sure our guys are prepared for for tomorrow. And uh, you know I I, I trust uh, our administration and, and all the planning and you know, everybody that's uh, you know tracking that situation. You had mentioned after the game that getting Trey Benson going on the kickoff return was big for <clears throat> kind of sparking him and, and vice versa. Uh, what does that conversation like during the week to say, you know, we want it not just for special teams, but understand that could have an implication for him, I guess, throughout the course of a game on offense? 
But what do you mean with the offense? I guess. I think you mentioned sparking him specifically as a player, trying to get him into a rhythm early on. So is that a conversation you guys have as coaches? Yeah. No. I mean, ultimately, Trey is a Trey is a great talent, you know, and he has, you know, he has all the the attributes of what you think would be a great return uh, returner. You know, forces missed tackles. You know, runs hard. Has great speed in the open field, um, and it just. Also, to be able to create those those touches as well, and you know, I'm excited about Sam McCall, and I'm excited about what he's shown. And you know, he was he was really close the week before, but you know, just in in this game, wanted to 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 provide that spark for Trey and really give him give him the opportunity. Uh, you know, I mentioned a little bit about our running back situation. That's that um, he's kind of adjusted some of those those thoughts, but it, I thought the time was right, and uh, you know, to see Trey be able to hit that. I mean. For him, I think the confidence has, has really grown a lot. You know, just even that last, you know, that last uh, part of the Louisville game, whenever he was able to get in there and make a couple guys miss, you know, just the, the, the strength of his runs, it's each rep for him is building confidence in, in what he can do and, and where he can go. And you see the toughness that he runs with. Uh, just, um, you know, he's, he's done a phenomenal job and really excited about his continued growth. Coach, um, you got um, you know um, a few players get some ACC action in the fourth quarter. You know that don't normally get to play. Um, did anyone kind of stand out for you to, for that game? Yeah, you know I really like. I thought Daniel Lyons was was somebody that on the defensive front. You know I really like what I'm seeing. You know Omar Graham um, is really flashing. I mentioned mentioned Azaria. You know, Azaria got in you know earlier in the game, and you know we wanted to we wanted to force force the action with him to to really see him go out and uh, uh, work to make an impact. And uh, you know there's a, there's a, a lot of guys. That that are that are growing and developing. You know, I think Rodney Hill. Um, you know, even there late in the game, uh, it was great to be able to get him in. And you know, you saw an ex explosive run that he was able to hit. You know, his, I think that uh, you know his his growth of, of what he's what he's doing. You know, one of my favorite things in the game was you go watch the last kickoff, and you see guys like the the mindset in how we cover. I mean, our guys are, are really embracing you know that that part of the game. And uh, you know, uh, you got. You know, Wyatt Rector has been phenomenal. You know, Brennan Gant, you get, you know, Brian Courtney got in there and I mean, he's flying down the field. Josh Morrell, I mean, that's, I like seeing guys want and take ownership in those roles and, and responsibilities. And it was, I mean, it was pretty impressive to see. So, there, yeah, there were a lot of guys that were able to, to make an impact and, uh, you know, try to maximize, you know, that, uh, that time on the field. But, you know, there's still a lot of, a lot of steps that they know that they have to take. And it's, it's good to be able to put that on display. Kind of following up on that, uh, do you see as guys get those reps? Because in the previous years, Florida State hasn't had a lot of a lot of opportunities to get younger guys those at bats. Do you see as they're on the field from week to week, uh, just them get better and better the more they're out there? Those young oh, guys. I think we've been playing a lot of younger guys in the previous year. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. I know what you're saying. Yes, sir. Um, no, it's good. It's good when you can get guys in that are in the depth, whether they're older or younger. Just those on on field experiences because now they get to show from what they're what they're doing in practice how they're applying it on the field and you know as you see you as you see the growth as you see the confidence as you see you know sometimes even you know some of the plays that don't go well for them how they can bounce back from that and that's what that, that's what's great for them and as you see the season continues to progress. I mean, the, the opportunities are going to grow for them, and you know, and it really helps the coach's confidence that you see them in a game. It's an ACC game. It's you know, in front of a sellout crowd, and you know, those things that that they get to, to go out, go out, and, and you kind of prove where they are, and it also inspires them to, to, to for the future opportunities that that could present themselves that they have to be ready and they have to be better. And so, you know, I think it, it definitely could open up some doors for guys and. Um, you know, we're we're big in that regardless just in how we how we practice trying to make sure that those guys are are always, you know, a part of, of that development uh, you know throughout the season and uh, you know, we'll see kind of see where that goes. Mike, do you do you have a hard and fast rule about when to go for it on fourth down? Is it a gut feel? Um, and when you have a kicker that's maybe not kicking it great, I assume that adds to the calculus too of when you go for it and when you don't, and what's the better percentage play. Yeah, I mean it's a kind of it's a, it's a twofold. I mean, so it, it, analytics, I always want to know you know what by percentages of what it could look like in certain situations, and also I mean I've got a sense of just you know uh, 
of strengths in the matchup. Of there's certain times personnel of you know where where our guys are. Um, you know I was I was pleased with Ryan and and you know obviously how we kicked off this game and you know he did a good job on his field goal. You know I, we did have the extra point uh, that was missed, but you know Ryan is Ryan is done a lot of good things in his career. You know, last year he was 10 to 13 on, on his field goals. And, you know, you know, this year he's had a couple that he, that he's missed. And it's, where do you go from there? Do you, and it's, it's, you know, it's not a talent issue. It's just, a, it's continuing to work on that consistency. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of confidence in Ryan, but when you're sitting there and you're looking at, you know, longer yardage, longer yardage field goals, it doesn't, it wouldn't necessarily matter if he's, you know, on point or not, I'm going to always kind of play to the to both, and then it goes to the gut and kind of the decision that I'm that I want to make. And um, you know, it worked out for us on uh, you know, on a couple, and then a few of the fourth downs we weren't able to convert. And so, you know, those things that are just uh, you know, you're always a, a part of that game and the decision making process. Did you get? Uh, I know at ACC meetings, have you had a lot of chance to get to know Coach Clawson? And uh, I guess when you watch his teams. What are some things that come to mind? Yeah, I've actually got to know, ironically, uh, you know, a few years ago, I was actually in a bowl game at Memphis, we played Wake Forest. That was the first time I really got to be around uh, Coach Clawson and, uh, you know, just some of the bowl, bowl game events. Uh, you know, a lot of respect for him. And, uh, you know, he's a phenomenal coach, you know, but a great man. And, I mean, that's – you see, you know, you see the character that he has that shows up within his football team. I mean, it is they're, – they're very, you know – they're on point in all aspects that you need to be on point to win games. I mean, they are they are opportunistic defensively. I mean, I think it's 34 of the last 36 games. I mean, they've created takeaways. I mean, they are going to be uh, unbelievable effort, great technique, great fundamentals, playmakers when they get an opportunity to get the ball in hands offensively. Uh, I mean, it is they're going to attack it. They're going to attack the defense. They are going to force you. Know, they're going to force your hand, and uh, you know they've done an incredible job of evaluation. I mean, you know people. You could take all recruiting rankings and all the recruiting comes down to evaluation. All right, this is one of the most talented offenses that, that we're going to play this year. I mean, they are talented at receiver, talented quarterback, offensive line. They got three ACC, uh, um, you know, you know, performers. I mean, running backs. I mean, it is. This is a very, very talented team because they evaluate really well. And you know, ultimately, it, that's what it that's what it comes down to. And you know, I think when you see you know just the details of that that he approaches, you know. All things, and you know, his team's gonna be prepared for, for each situation. And uh, you know, we gotta go out, and we gotta we gotta play at a, at a very high level this week. And you know, it's it's still not about Wake Forest. It's still it's all about us. And you know, if we can focus on on the things that we need that we can control, uh, we know it's gonna be a, a great challenge. And we're excited for the opportunity to compete. And uh, but you know, I've got all the respect in the world for uh, for Coach Claus and just how he does, you know, how he runs his program and and the things that the characteristics that his his football teams put on display. After the game, you'd mentioned you felt a, a sense of energy around town, around campus throughout the week, building up into the game. I imagine that's only going to continue as you guys keep winning. And I'm asking this knowing that it's still early in the season, but for you personally to kind of feel the buzz and to feel that kind of growth around the program, around the city. I guess, what has that been like for you early on here? I mean, it, it's great. It's, you know, we're here at Florida State, and there, there is a, a, a great expectation and a great sense of pride in our program. And, uh, you know, I, lo I mean, I love that because it is about the people. And, you know, um, you know, I'm so blessed for the opportunity to be the head coach here. And you know, good Lord brought me here for a reason, and that's what we're you know every day we're trying to represent the program the way the program needs to be represented. And you know I think when the community, when the uh, you know and the fan base, you know they see a team that's fun to cheer for, they see a team that that's gonna that's working you know extremely hard to do things the right way, and they care about each other, they care about what they represent. I know I said that maybe in my opening press conference of the before camp, is that you know these guys care about Florida State. They care about each other. That matters. And I think that shows up when they're out there on the field. And, you know, in, in, a, in a day of age where everything, you know, seems to focus on the individual, whether it's social media, whether it's, you know, all the things going on, when you have a group that is willing to invest for something other than just themselves, I mean, it's, there, there should be a sense of pride. And that's what has always made this program you know, you know what it is, and that's what we've worked really hard to kind of get that back. So yes, when you have a sold-out crowd, when you have when you have people that are in town, when you're you know, you you get it. I mean, you feel the pride 
regardless of what the record is, because people care about being a Florida State Seminole. But when when they're seeing those positive steps and, and they're, there's a team that, that, you know, is representing you how you want to be represented, then, yeah, it's, it's definitely a great joy. And like I said, I'm just, uh, I'm just blessed for the, the opportunity I get to be able to lead it and to, to help guide it. And, you know, we've got to go continue to get better because, I mean, this is a, this is a special place. Mike, uh, where is Duke Cooper now compared to maybe a month ago? And what will be the key for him and just the secondary overall against guys like A.T. Perry? Yeah, you know, he's, I mean, it, you know, going into the game as probably as good as he's been since we started, you know, at, at, towards the beginning of the camp. And, um, you know, it's unfortunate that he had the, the, the injury and it took, a, you know, it, he, he battled his butt off to try to be able to play uh, there in the LSU game. And, you know, it really, you know, to see him out there on uh, uh, Saturday night, it was he was back to to what we we expect you know him to him to look like in the play and um, you know so I expect him to be 100 percent you know moving forward and you know that that's, that truly helps us but we're seeing we're seeing really positive steps from from all the guys you know I think Renardo Green has played at an ex extremely high level um, you know you got Darian Jones is playing is playing his best ball um, you know, since he's been here he's taking some some real positive strides you know, Greedy Vance who also had an interception uh, you know there in the game Kevin Knowles I mean you got you're seeing those those corners, those the, the the nickelbacks. I mean, those guys are all really doing a, uh, a a great job, and you know they know the challenge that's ahead. And you know our safeties, uh, like I mentioned it earlier, I thought Jamie Jamie's probably played his best game of the year, and you just felt his presence. I don't, I don't know what all the stat lines you know, said about it, but I mean I know what I saw. And you know, it, I think when you have that, those guys that are that are taking those uh, uh, those positive steps. I mean, you face a team like this, I mean, everybody's going to get challenged. Yeah, everybody's going to have one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and you know, just uh, you know, being able to trust your fundamentals, trust your techniques, and go, uh, you know, rise to the occasion. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a critical factor in this week's game, and uh, you know, I'm excited to see our guys compete. All right, thank you, guys. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you.